Welcome to this video. Here, uh, in this video, we are going to see uh, the remaining part of this architecture, which we have already seen this. Uh, an architecture is uh, 8085 architecture, you broadly divided into the following blocks, register array, ALU and logical group, instruction decoder and machine cycle encoder, timing and control circuitry, interrupt control group, and serial IO control. Already we have seen the previous video, the register array, ALU and logical group. Now we are going to see the third part of this, that is third group, instruction decoder and machine cycle encoder. Yes, now we'll see the, so already we have seen the first part, that is register array, there are 14 uh, registers. Uh, 12 among that 12 registers are 8-bit registers and a 2 or 16-bit register where these are all the following uh, 12 8-bit register b c d e h l and accumulator instruction and flag registers w z and temporary data register. all these are 8-bit uh, registers okay so the last one uh, program counter and stack pointer these two are 16-bit register they are used to store the they, they address of the memory so since the address of the memory is a 16 bit, uh, this two registers also 16 bit address. They can hold a 16 bit data. So that is what we have seen in the previous video. And we have seen the flag register also. So there are five flags, uh, sign bit, zero bit, auxiliary carry, parity, and the carry flag. So the respective uh, bits will be set and reset uh, depending upon the uh, arithmetic operations uh, uh, which, are, which are carried over. So here, carry bit is set when the arithmetic operation generates a carry or zero and so on. So all these things we have seen in the previous uh, video. So till this we have seen point uh, that is program counter and the stack pointer. Now the next one, what we are going to see is instruction decoder and machine cycle encoder and the timing and control security. This instruction decoder and machine cycle encoder, here the instruction decoder the, in the picture, uh, block diagram, we have seen an instruction decoder. So what is the function of the instruction decoder? The instruction decoder will decode the instruction. What do you mean by the decoding the instruction? Uh, it will be uh, what that particular instruction is given. Say, for example, whether it is the moving the data from A register to B register, or adding, or subtraction, like that. So it decode what is, what is uh, said in that particular instruction. So that will be understood by the ALU and the respective operation has to be carried over. So decodes the opcode stored in the instruction register and establish a sequence of events to follow. That's what done by the instruction decoder. Then it encoded and transferred to the timing. So after decoding, so what are all the things has to be done? How much uh, clock pulse in how many clock pulse that particular instruction has to be executed? How many machine cycle it will take? So all those things will be uh, already given. So based on that, the timing and control unit will operate in order to execute the particular operation. Then as we have seen timing and control circuitry, it works as a brain of the CPU because uh, everything has to be in a timing, so in a sequence. So in order to carry over that, the control signals are very much necessary as well as it has clock signal, the computer has a clock signal. So the, uh, during each and every clock signal, what has to be done in each and every step will be decided. So for proper sequence and synchronization of all operations of microprocessor, this unit generates all the timing and control signals necessary for communication between the microprocessor and the peripherals. Next comes the input control group and serial IO control group. So what is uh, input control group? So for each and every uh, access of the memory as well as the peripherals, it, uh, the operation of the CPU will be stopped then and that that is that we call it as interrupt say for example it needs an input it, the input has to be read from the memory means the current see the sequence will be just it will be stopped for some few time a few minutes or few seconds and then uh, in order to execute that it has to get the data from the memory either from the main memory or from the secondary memory so that is in that an interrupt takes place an interrupt is nothing but uh, uh, occurrence of an external disturbance. Because if, for example, in the flow of the program, you have given a print of statement. Print of statement is what? When you execute a print of statement, the monitor, 
uh, it will be stopped the cursor will blink and you have to enter the data so that is what it is accessing the uh, monitor and the, we have to enter the input from the keyboard so two uh, io devices uh, access one is the monitor and the other one is the your keyboard so after getting that information so for example i am getting the value of c and d and then further operations is done based on that whether the adding of c or d or whatever it is so in order to do that you have to get the data for c and d which means it will wait for the user to enter the input that is what interrupt so uh, it gets the data from the excel for that it will stop temporarily it stops the execution of the process so that is why it is called interrupt temporary stopping so it is called interrupt so after serving the interrupt 8085 it resumes after getting the value of input of his pnd the further sequence of the program is resumed and it carry over so till any other interrupt that is any other io operations is there so it resumes its normal working sequence transfer the control to the special routine not only the interrupt takes place by io but if there is a subroutine so any procedure is there any function is there so what happens when there is a program and some two functions imagine so when it comes to that particular function automatically the sequence is shifted to execution of that particular function within that function again the sequence is followed so but anyway the main program is shifted to that function and after completing of that function again it goes back to the place where it has stopped and start continuing from the next line this is how the sequence is executed anyway since it transfer it control to the function there it is interrupted the normal sequence is interrupted so these are all the some of the interrupts it take place in order for the program to execute properly as well as for the cpu to carry over uh, the set functions in the program so there are it follows it has some hardware interrupts and software interrupts so micro the 8085 has some software interrupts as well as hardware interrupts these are all the given is a uh, these are all the five uh, hardware interrupts trap rsc 7.5 6.5 rsd 5.5 and intr intr is for interrupt so in response to intr whenever an intr is generated uh, once it is accepted that interrupt is accepted the computer the cpu generates intr interrupt acknowledge signal after uh, receiving that uh, the io will start uh, transferring the data from the uh, io device to main memory or from main memory to io device and vice versa so Uh, these are the thing so far you just remember an interrupt is nothing but uh, it stops the execution of the program till it receives the data which need so after it receives then the program flow will be continued so that is the in those cases and all the interrupt is very much used as well as well normal execution if there is any subroutines or functions procedures in those cases also the interrupts plays a very big role so then uh, interrupt is the one through which io device after accessing that it get the control of cpu and communicate with that so interrupt helps in that then serial io control group so what is that serial input output control group so here this controls the flow of the data in the uh, lines that is ad0 to ad7 in parallel data transfer so these are all the address lines which acts as well as the data lines also so under some condition the same will be used for serial transfer what is serial transfer and parallel transfer at a time when the data flows we call it as a parallel transfer serial transfer is one by one after one data is sent then the next data will be sent that's for serial transfer serial data is sent through sid that is these are these are other two control signals and output can be received through sod <coughs> now here this is the pin configuration of 8085 so this is this is a 40 pin configuration this microprocessor 40 pin so we'll see one by one here this is for the power and this is a interrupt signal hold uh, and hlda all these things are um, signals again these are all the control signals and clock is a clock signal clock out so we have the, the clock uh, this is a uh, through this this can be connected with the clock and reset in uh, ready and uh, io slash mba this is what we have seen the same address line will act uh, as both uh, uh, whether it is accessing the memory or the io device external peripheral device or the memory whether the data is accessed from the main memory or the 
uh, external peripheral devices that can be uh, uh, represented by this io slash m bar so when the signal is low it is it means it is accessing from memory the data is accessed from memory when the signal is high that is io when this signal equal to one then it is accessing data from the said io device whether it may be a hard disk or it may be something else like that so for that the same signal is used for both purpose that this this we call it as a multiplexing the same signal when it is used for more than one purpose the same way address lines also are multiplexed so here if you see that here these are all the 16 address lines a d 0 to 1 2 3 etc up to a is 50 so 16 address lines are there in this among this this a d 0 to 87 this acts both as a transferring of address as well as transferring of data whereas this is only purely for address so here these are all the lower order and these are all the higher order of an address so when i say higher order uh, so okay, we'll see what is higher order and lower order later but here it will be uh, uh, these eight lines are used both for addressing uh, placing of address memory address or io address as well as the data so how it will distinguish whether the data placed in this is an address or a data that can be done by this alu ale signal address latch enable if this is equal to high then which means the information placed on these 16 lines is address when it is equal to zero then it means the line the only uh, the the data place placed on this will be only data it has to take this consider this as a data not as an address because everything is only a zeros and ones so how it will differentiate so by using this only single line say so how we are using i was slash m bar this single signal for identifying both whether the uh, it is addressing the memory or uh, io device here we have ale address latch enable this is used to differentiate whether the data present in this line here from a0 to a7 whether it is a data or address then this is the ground and then rd bar and w r bar these are all the control signals when rd bar is low then it means it is reading okay then wr is for writing so this and this combined together rt bar and this line combined together say whether it is reading from whether it is a read operation of memory or uh, read operation of io are the same way wr bar this is combined with this it says if whether it is for, from memory writing into memory or writing into an io device then int int these are all the interrupt signals we'll see all these things later already in the previous uh, slide we have seen these are all the interrupt signals each and everything we are going to read in detail study in detail later then these are all the sid and sod these are all serial input and serial output and uh, these are all the clock uh, crystals are connected through which they generate the clock, the clock clock speed which are necessary for that so the, this same picture is uh, given here as a block diagram so we'll see address bus and data bus here 16 address line uh, this is what we are going to see that so 16 address lines address bus is nothing but 16 bit so address memory is a 16 bit address 16 bit so we have the address lines also as a 16 bit so 16 address line divided into two segments as we can divide them at a8 to a15 unidirectional unidirectional the data flows in the only one direction that is to the memory to the io device not from there so unidirectional and carries most significant bit or higher order bit whereas ad07 to ad0 it is a bidirectional it carries least significant bit meant for data transfer and lower order address transfer to save the number of pins lower order and lower order address pins are multiplexed with 8 bit data bus during the execution of the instruction these lines carry the address bits during the early part t1 state and then during the late part we'll see what this uh, later part and uh, what, what is that all those things we will see The, here what we are going to see in this slide is uh, these are the control signals ALE, S1 and S0. 
ALE as we have seen already seen in the 40 pin configuration we have seen that ALE is one of the signal where it is used for differentiating between whether the uh, data in the line address line A0 to A7 is a um, carrying address or it is carrying data. So this ALE is used to demultiplex the address and the database. That is the same lines are used for both address, carrying address as well as data. So when they are going to carry, when it will be understood as a, it is carrying an address or a data that will be decided by this ALE. So it is, a, it is a generated every time the 8085 begins an operation. So what is an operation to fetch the data from the memory? So when it is done, so when a reading or writing to memory, when, when it is going to read an instruction from the memory, which place in memory it is stored for that there will be address. in a particular address only that the instruction will be stored. So that address will be placed in the uh, address lines. So it indicates the bits on A, D7 to D0 are address bits or data bits. So if ALE is equal to, if the signal is high, ALE signal is high or one, the lines here in this AD0, A0 to A7, they have address. When it is zero, it means it is carrying data. So the next one is S1 and S0. These are all the status signals. The status signals used to specify the kind of operation being performed. So for example, these are the status signal, S1 and S0. They, when it is both zero, then it means halt. The operation is stopped. When this is zero and this is one, at these combinations, it is nothing but writing. Whether it is a IO write or a memory, but it is mean it is meant for writing. When it is this is one and S naught is zero, then it is reading. And when both are one, it is a fetch cycle. Fetch cycle is instruction is fetched from the memory. So we'll see the other control signals. Uh, or the bar, that is read signal. So it is active low. So when uh, when it is zero, then uh, it works for reading. So read memory or IO device. So there is a read signal, uh, like how we have used the ALE for both uh, recognizing whether the data present in that A0 to A7 address lines or address or data. Here also RD, read. This is used for reading. But from where it is reading, whether it is from IO device or memory that can be done by another signal called IO slash M bar. So when IO here, uh, when uh, writing itself is given uh, that when IO is high, when the signal is high, it is meant for uh, reading the input or uh, reading input from the IO device. When it is zero, then it is, uh, that is M bar here it give, given as M bar, that is low signal. When the, the signal is zero, then it is reading, reading or writing from the uh, IO device. Uh, sorry, from the memory. So this is used to differentiate. So how ALE, the same signal is used to for multiplicing the, uh, both the same address lines as uh, used to carry address as data. Here this I was slash M bar, this is used to indicate whether reading and writing is from memory or a IO device. So this is a read signal. Wait, this will be combined with RD and it will be combined with WR. So when it is combined with that, say we'll see in this uh, uh, truth table, so when active, this is low, zero. When it says zero, it is definitely a memory operation. Then RD, it is zero. So when it is low, it is reading. Uh, high should not be considered because it is active low and here also active low. So we have to take the low signal only. So when it is low, that is, this is I was slash M bar has that signal, in that signal only zero. Uh, here it is also zero. Then it is memory read. Okay, so MEMR, it generates another control signal called MEMR, which is responsible for reading from memory. When this is zero, again, it is from memory. And RD is one, then no reading. But here, WR is zero means writing. So when this is zero and WR zero, it is it generates another control signal called MEMW, which is nothing but memory write. Then when this is one, automatically it says IO device, not from memory. Then which it is has to be done, whether it is reading, writing, is indicated by these two signals. That is, so it is zero. That means low, always RD is low. So one and zero combined together, it generates IOR, reading from the IO device. Same way here, one 
and this is zero. We have to consider active low only. So one and zero, it is I O W. So it just generates a control signal for I O W, which is nothing but I O, right? So see this uh, uh, already I have explained this. Uh, Table that is what we are we are going to see here also read memory or I/O device. So generally the signal is for reading memory or I/O device. But when it is combined with this, it says whether it is reading from I/O or memory. That is what we have seen combining these two. So indicated the data to be read either from memory or I/O device, and data bus is ready for accepting data from memory or I/O device. WR the same way. This is for writing memory or I/O device. Indicated that data on the data bus ought to be returned into selected memory or I/O device. Sorry, here it is not P; it is I/O device. So next, I/O M bar used to differentiate between the I/O device and the memory operations. It signals specifies that the read-write operation relates to whether memory or I/O device. When I/O slash M it is equal to one, the address on the address bus is for I/O device. That is what we have seen. When it is one, it is from I/O device. When it is equal to zero, the address On the address bus is for memory. So the, we will see the other control signals also. VCC it is for power supply. This is ground reference. And X1, X2 it is a crystal which is connected at these two pins. So and this is mainly used for generating the frequency. And clock is for generating the clock signals. So when all these things are combined, so far we have seen the uh, the status signals. When uh, what is the meaning of this? We will see here in this. So when This is zero, which means it is memory. Okay, when S one is one and this is one, already we have seen the meaning of this hot. When they both are one, it is fetch cycle. So when this is one, it is fetching. So op code fetch, which means reading from memory. The instruction is read from memory, and the control signal generated is R D bar. And when it is equal to zero, that is what we have seen. R D is zero, so it is reading from memory. So this is zero and this is zero, and when these two are one. Then it is fetching the data from the memory. Then memory read. So naturally, when memory read, this is will be zero and this is also zero. Then what does it mean? Here already we have seen reading. This must be one and this must be zero. S one one and this is zero. So that's what we have seen. So what we have seen in this uh, trick table in this table is we have combined these two signals and we have formed this. So up to memory write is this is zero and W R is zero and zero and one. So All these things signal together indicate that uh, it's uh, writing into the memory. So that is what I say. Control and status signals, okay, along with the uh, clock signals, they combine together and they they are responsible for uh, synchronization of a particular operation. So I will read. This is one and this is one zero reading. Same way I will write. This is one here zero and one. So you can see that. Zero on which is right. So writing into the I/O device. Then interrupt acknowledge. When these two were one, it is nothing but what we are seeing uh, here fetch. But uh, when it is combined with the I/O M bar, that is I/O device, then it is fetching means uh, and INDA is zero. Then interrupt. It acknowledges the interrupt. Then halt. Here is that is. Uh, Try state that is it will go to high impedance state so that na nothing can be uh, whatever is meant it cannot be interpreted so halt uh, it is it goes to a high impedance state so halt and here zero zero then hold for this again x is unspecified whatever it may be it may be a one or it may be zero it may be one or zero so and whatever the signals here so these are all the control signals combined together in order to generate this halt hold and reset. Then some of the externally initiated signals. So that's what that is interrupts. Here I N T R interrupt request. So this is used to as a general purpose interrupt. It is similar to the I N T signal of A T A T A. So this uh, when issuing this the C P U uh, the for example uh, uh, a particular uh, I am extract I am accessing data from the secondary storage. In that case it lacks the external device which is nothing but the hard disk. It request. The CPU to uh, uh, to get the control signal capture of the control signal so that it can transfer data from the secondary storage to the main memory. That is called interrupt request. It requests the CPU to allocate the uh, DMA. DMA is direct memory access through which those control signal through which it can send the data to the main memory. So that's what interrupt request. 
then INTA once uh, it receives that interrupt request. Now the CPU, what it will do? It will send an another control signal called INT interrupt acknowledge. If it is ready to accept the data transfer from the secondary storage, if it is ready to give the service to the secondary storage, then it issue an another signal called INTA. So we call this as a handshaking signal. In other words, INTR and INTA you can be called as a handshaking signal where the when the external device wants to communicate with the CPU, they send a request. Then on receiving those signals, uh, if the CPU is ready to uh, service the external device, then it will say uh, it will give its acceptance through an INT, another signal called INT. On receiving that, now the data transfer takes place. After receiving that only, the data transfer takes place till it has to wait. So uh, these are all the this comes under the interrupt signal. Then RST 7.5, 6.5. These are also a uh, restart interrupts. They are vector interrupts that transfer the program control to a specific memory locations. So we will be studying about these in detail when it comes, when we are going to study about the interrupt exclusively. And they have high priorities. They have more priority than these signals. So trap. Trap is a non-maskable and it has the most priority among all these things. It is similar to switching of the system or booting the booting. So trap when this uh, when this occurs, the whole system reboots again. So like that. So it is a non-maskable interrupt and it has the highest priority among all these things. Then hold this signal indicates that the peripheral such as DMA control is requesting the use of address and database. So once it is that is that the DMA is direct memory access. So for example, when uh, from uh, data from secondary storage is to be transferred, a bulk data has to be transferred to the main memory, then all the, the address and database lines has to be given to the secondary storage. In that case, it requests that. So that can be sent by this hold. This will be sent by the uh, secondary storage requesting DMA. So after that, HLDA, this signal acknowledges the this signal and the data transfer ready the signal is used to delay the microprocessor read or write cycles until a slow responding peripheral is ready to send or accept data so for example when uh, when you are sending data to the printer you want to take uh, some printout in the case the printer is definitely a slower device than the cpu so in that case it will wait till the printer is ready. So when the printer gives ready, then only the data can be transferred. So it is for the mainly the ready signal is mainly used for between a fast device and slow receiving. So when it is ready to receive only the data can be transferred. So in that case, we use this ready signal. 